grade 6 math number 6.2b using other formulas. There were some other formulas in the, in the book, so I thought we would cover them to give you a hand. So there's numerous formulas in the world to help us solve problems. We just did Celsius and Fahrenheit in video 6.2. This is 6.2b as you can see. So here's a few more, all right? This is the heart rate formula, and it's the recommended maximum heart rate in beats per minute during exercise for a person of a certain age. So what this means is how fast it's doctors recommend your heartbeat uh, in minutes when you're exercising. And it depends on your age. Your age is going to make it vary. If you're young, you can have a higher heart rate. If you're older, you should have a lower heart rate. Okay. So here is the age N. R is the heart rate. What we do is we have 206.9 minus 0.67 multiplied by n. And remember when the variable is next to a number like this, it means we're going to multiply it, okay? So we're going to do a 20-year-old, all right? It doesn't matter if it's male or female, it's just a 20-year-old. So to find this heart rate, we put the 20 in where the n is, knowing that we need to multiply them, and we need to follow the order of operations, we're going to multiply first. 0.67 times 20 is 1340. Knowing that there was a decimal point here, we counted the hops in the equation and put that many hops into the product. So we have 13.4. We subtract this from the 206.9, and we get 193.5 for the maximum heart rate for a 20-year-old while exercising. Isn't that kind of cool? That's like the healthy heart rate for a 20-year-old when in the middle of exercising. Now you could use your own age and plug it in here, you can write this down and try putting your own age in here and working this and seeing how what your heart rate should be maximum recommended during exercise. Wouldn't that be kind of fun to find out what your own personal one is? All right, Galileo's formula for free falling objects, he had a formula that said when an object falls, it depends on how much time has elapsed in seconds of how, how many feet that object would fall. And distance is gonna be D, and the time that elapsed is going to be t, and we have to do it in seconds. So here's the formula right here. All right, t is the time, d is the distance. If you notice, we have an exponent here too. So a man drops a tomato from his balcony, and we want to know how far that tomato is going to fall in two seconds. So we put a 2 where the t is, and we see that it's an exponent, and with the order of operations, exponents are going to be done before anything else, before any multiplication. So 2 times 2, is 4. Okay? So now that's done. That exponent's done. We're going to multiply it by 16, and we're going to get 64 feet in 2 seconds. That is one fast tomato, isn't it? 64 feet in 2 seconds? I hope he didn't hit anybody in the head. All right. Perimeter of a rectangle formula. Remember, perimeter is the distance around an object, like the fence around a backyard. So if the length is 16 inches and the width is 8, the perimeter is 2 times the length times plus 2 times the width, okay? Perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. When a variable is next to a number, it means to multiply, okay? So now, if this is 16 and this is 8, we've got 2 times 16 plus 2 times 8. 2 times 16 is 32. 2 times 8 is 16. We add these two together and get 48 inches. Our perimeter around this rectangle is 48 inches. So remember when working with formulas, we use the order of operations. Remember, parentheses first, then exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract, last. PEMDAS. Okay? So you can try these formulas on your own. I know there's some work in the book, and for those of you who are not using the Go Math 6th grade book, I'm sure these will be helpful to you too. All right? Keep up the good work. Keep plugging along. Progress is being made, and I'll see you next video. Bye.